Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Slusher. Uh, I'm here with a read aloud. It's called Let the Children March by Monica Clark Robinson and illustrated by Frank Morrison. Um, and we're reading this book in honor of Martin Luther King. His birthday is January 15th and we will be honoring him on Monday, January 17th. Uh, we also have the month of February coming up, which is African American History Month. Uh, so this book is going to talk about how some children stepped in when their parents couldn't and marched, were very brave, and marched to show um, their beliefs that these laws need to change, that things need to be equal and fair and... Um, everyone is created equal. So it says, in the week, in the first week of May 1963, African American families gathered all around Birmingham, Alabama to hear Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. speak. The people had come to plan, to organize, to mobilize, and to rally against the discriminatory Jim Crow laws that kept black people separate from white people. That week, thousands of children and teens volunteered to march for their civil rights in the place of their parents, who were fearful of losing their jobs. Facing fear and hate, the courage and resilience of the children who marched in these protests changed the world in more ways, in ways more, docu more monumental than they could have ever imagined. Excuse me. So this illustrator has won the Coretta Scott King honor before, uh, and they used oil paintings with the text. Okay. 1963, Birmingham, Alabama. I couldn't play on the same playground as the white kids. I couldn't go to their schools. I couldn't drink from their water fountains. There were so many things I couldn't do. See the sign? One warm spring night, my family went to church. We weren't there to have regular services. We were there to hear Dr. King speak. We were there to plan. He wanted to raise an army of peaceful protesters to fight for freedom. His brown eyes flashing fire and love, Dr. King told us the time had come to march. If I march, Mama said, I'll lose my job, sure enough. I can't march, Daddy said. I got a family to feed. The weight of the world rested on our parents' shoulders, but this burden, this time, did not have to be theirs to bear. Can you imagine just wanting to have the same rights and the same treatment as everybody else and not being able to even protest because you're afraid you will lose your job? That's just unimaginable. I don't have a boss to fear, my brother said, or a job to lose. We can march this time. We'll be Dr. King's army, I said. I'll be fine, Daddy, I promised. Don't worry, Mama. Dr. King didn't like children being put in harm's way. He was a daddy too, after all. But he said that though we were young, we were not too young to want our freedom. Let the children march. They will lead the way. On May 2nd, a sunny Thursday, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, we all met at the church dressed in our best, feet ready. In a silence so loud that all I could hear was my racing heart, we began to walk. Hand in hand, we marched, so frightened, yet certain of what was right for freedom. The path may be long and troubled, 
but I'm going to walk on. Would I be hurt? Would we be heard? Would it all be worth it in the end? I wanted to run from the angry faces in the crowd. Run from danger, run from fear. Boys and girls, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, on and on, we marched, we marched, we marched. Singing the songs of freedom, 1,000 strong we came. So powerful. Hate dogged my heels all that day, its yellowed canine teeth sharp. But courage walked by my side and kept me going. Disperse or you'll be jailed, the police shouted on the first day. Disperse or you'll get wet, the police shouted on the second day. Disperse or we'll release the dogs, the police shouted the third day. We did not disperse. We kept on marching. We wouldn't stop until things started to change. They are shooting water at children who are simply protesting to have equal rights. <coughs> Excuse me. After I was sprayed by water stronger than anything I've ever felt, rough hands pushed me forward and I fell to my knees in the police wagon. I was going to jail. Dr. King reassured our parents, don't worry about your children, he said. They're going to be all right. Don't hold them back if they want to go to jail, for they are doing a job for not only themselves, but for all of America and for all of mankind. That night, crowded into a cell too small for even half of the kids, we sang, we shall overcome, ain't gonna let nobody turn me round, and freedom is coming. Our parents couldn't be there with us, but still we sang, wrapped in the proud and loving arms of our ancestors. I was still in jail, but we heard that the next day and the next, more children marched. The water hoses they used to sting us could not stop our fierce tide. The path may be long and troubled, but I'm gonna walk on. Turn the other cheek we had been taught. Show love where there is hate. The world watched as hate bruised us. But for seven days, we walked only in love. The jails swelled to bursting, and even President Kennedy took notice. Daddy said the president received letters and calls about us from all over the world. Our march would become a memory, a small part of a larger story. But we had been heard, and the seeds of revolution were sown. Two days and nights I stayed in the jail. Some stayed even longer. When I left, I was tired and sore and my best dress was ripped. But my smile was as wide as the Mississippi River. I had made a difference. I'm so proud of you, baby girl, Mama said. Your march was what made them see. With nothing, with nothing more than our feet, voices, and courage, we had done what others could not change was right around the corner. We felt it like a cool breeze in an Alabama August. On May 10th, the great news rang out. Dr. King had reached an agreement with the white leaders of the city and desegregation would begin. One month later, I was playing on a playground I'd never been allowed to play on before. Two months later, my family ate at a diner we'd never been allowed to eat in before. Our march made the difference. We children led the way. Singing the songs of freedom, 1,000 strong we came. 
So instead of a sign that says whites only, it now says park. Everyone, welcome to play at the park. So here are some pictures from that event in history. So you can see the children and the water that the police are spraying on them. It says as many as 3,000 children and teens were arrested before the conflict ended. And it says, I knew I was going to jail. Janice Kelsey. How brave did those children have to be? They're walking past police officers. They're walking past all these adults that are yelling at them and screaming. And they continue to march, even knowing that they were going to be arrested. So incredibly brave. Thank you for, um, thank you for reading that book with me.